I first came in contact with uh, my Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, in 1931. Ever since then, I used to go to attend uh, the evening Kirtan and part in the Rup Gaudiyama Tatal Habad. You see, both uh, um, um, Prabhupada Mane, uh, Abhay Babu, as we used to call him then, you see, both Abhay Babu and I used to live in Allahabad. Both of us lived in Allahabad. And both of us used to go to attend the evening part and kirtan in Rup Gaudiya Mat. So we started meeting there, you see. Both he and I used to go to attend the evening part and kirtan. And I remember sometimes he would play on Murdanga, you see. Sometimes he would sing. He was very good at that, you see. Um, Murdanga and kirtan, very, very good at that. He had a shop, he was a chemist then. He had a shop in, in Janjariya Pul, you see. Then later on he shifted to Bahadur Ganj, a better locality, you see. And I remember he, he also used to manufacture his medicines, you see. And uh, occasionally he made some tonic, and once or twice he gave me his tonics, you see. He gave me his tonics. Uh, which I used, you see. Once it was so funny here in, uh, uh, in this Khan temple, someone asked me in Prabhupada's presence, Dr. Kapoor, how old are you? I said, well, I'm 75. It was about 10 years back, perhaps more. Uh, what is the secret of health? I said, Prabhupada's tonics. <laughs> Prabhupada remembered, he laughed. Uh, there had been no such information about his living. Uh, he was out of the house for some... Usually he was going out of the house for his personal work or some business purposes. But um, on the particular day, I don't remember the exact date of that time. Uh, as soon as he left home, we were thinking that Prabhupada will come back again to home after uh, in the evening that he was really used to do. But um, the particular date he left home, he did not turn up again. I asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, how you were separated from your family? He said that my wife is a, a big uh, drinks, uh, is a tea, tea. He was take, she was taking too much of teas. So Prabhupada told her whether you want me or tea. At that time, she said tea. So then we, I said that you do with your tea, I will go with it by my own way. With the Prabhupada, I only met when there was a function in some, you know, religious function in Kurukshetra. There was a very big people had come for bath and taking bath and all that. And I had gone there. With me, two, three people were there, but they were not interested in talks. They wanted to go round and eat and do something. I was not interested. I was going round seeing people. So I met Prabhupada sitting down below a tree because it was quite hot. So he was sitting there. So I asked him, I said, Kya, Babaji, kya kar rahe ho tum? He was in white clothes. The dhoti and baron. So he said, no, I So then I had a talk with him for about half an hour or so. At that time, I don't think he had become a sadhu or sannyasi. He was just... Then he said, no, my family is in Calcutta. But I had come for this function here to have bath. That way, we talked for some time. And then he said, okay, suppose I want to meet you, I gave him my card. Choksi, you knew, no, my yes, office fellow. He was with me. So Choksi was somewhere, I called him, I said, Choksi, come. And then uh, he gave me my card, his card and all that, and coming, you come to Sindhya house, if you want to talk to her. After that, he came to Sindhya house, one evening, very late, till later. I was still in the office doing some work. Then I got up and wanted to 
you know, come home. It was a must be about seven o'clock. And it was quite dark, there was nobody, no office being up is at seven, nobody was there. So Choksi was sitting there on his table. So I asked him, I said, Choksi, who is again sitting with you? Because Choksi was sitting on his table. And Swamiji was sitting like this, what I am sitting. And Chokshi was at the back of his table. So he said, no, somebody has come, some Swami, but he doesn't listen to me. He said, no, I would like to meet her. And then only I will go, I will talk to her. So I went then, I said, excuse Swamiji, kya kaam hai? Then he showed me Bhagwat. He said, I have heard your name. And we have met in Kukurukshetra, if you remember. I want to uh, get this book printed. I said, you can come tomorrow, to, because when there are some people and daylight, and also, you know, at, at this time, in, at, it is really getting darker. So Choksi is alone. So he said, yes, I'll come. Then I still, I asked Choksi, because my secretary was there. So he typed out a letter to uh, one or two friends. They are no more now. So uh, telling them that you, uh, why don't you do something about this gentleman? He is a written Bhagwat and I would like you to help him. And I am going to do this this much. I wrote that letter and gave him. He went and then I went home. After a day he came and he said, now I'm going to back to Vrindavan. I said, why are you going? He said, my work is done. Now I will try to see how I can get it printed. My association with the um, Bhaktivedanta Maharaj with Prabhupada increased more and more. And uh, you see, naturally we would always talk of Krishna and uh, Prabhupada and so on. In 1932, a year after that, I joined this Parikrama. Prabhupada couldn't join because he was in business, you see. He was in business, he couldn't come. When I returned from the Parikrama, he asked me, about the Pakrama and I have to tell him what happened, you see, where and so on. For a number of days he was. Uh, for about uh, five, six years we were together at Allahabad. And we used to meet almost every day. After that I joined government service. After that we didn't meet for a very long time, you see. For a very long time, about five, I think about 25 or 30 years, you see. When I retired from government service, I came to stay here in Vrindavan, you see. And I had lost all contact with Prabhupada. I didn't know what had happened to him. Perhaps he didn't know about me. One day, accidentally, I was uh, in Radha Mudha temple here sitting in the veranda, waiting for someone. And I saw Prabhupada coming out of his room. He was then staying here, you see. He came out with two uh, American disciples. Prabhupada naturally was in sannyasi Ivesh at this time. And I tell you, I couldn't recognize him, you see. He was so much, the years had made change, and then he had put on, he was, he was now a sannyasi. So he was completely changed. And uh, I was also changed perhaps, but not so much as Prabhupada. So he, he just kept guessing at me, you see. And then after some time he just hazarded a guess and said, Dr. Kapoor, oh, I recognize him from his voice. I said, Abhay Babu, oh, then he embraced me, <laughs> you see. Sometimes you recognize your old friends from voice more than from face, you see. I as soon as I said, Dr. Kapoor, I recognized him. 
So then he, he was perhaps going somewhere, he cancelled his program, took me inside his room and told me all about the work that he had done. He had just returned from, I think, after his visit to America, this was the first time he had come back, you see. He was now an international figure, you see. And he told me all about the work that he had done, showed me new newspaper cuttings and so on. All of a sudden one day he came to office and he said, I want to go to America. I said, you, are you crazy? Why do you want to go there? What will you do? You know, American government, you know, sometimes they are very funny. They will send you back. So once, you know, it goes on record that you have sent back, then they won't let you in. Why do you want to go? And at that time, you know, so many people were not going to America. Now it is quite different. Yeah. So I said, why do you want to go? Kya karega? You to say, are buddha mar jayega khali. So he won't listen. What does it mean? <laughs> that I meant the old man who are going to die like this, that. Who will look after you? What will you do that? So he said, kya karo, jana, jana, jana. I said, all right, I'll make this arrangement, then you go. So when the arrangement was made, he was in Bombay. I made all this arrangement with the captain and the ship went to load some ports. His wife went for that. Then they came back. At that time, our other ship dropped him. Uh, he, I think he went uh, from, from, Calcutta. from Calcutta. So the other ship went and dropped him there. And then the, he went by that ship. He was residing before he left India. He was staying in a dharamshala, that is uh, free lodging and all of that in North Calcutta. And I have taken him off from there by a taxi. Immediately we rushed to Kedipurcha and all that. A very early morning at about 5, 5.30. I said nothing, but I was very much shocked that he was leaving us. Immediately he realized our mental position and he advised me, don't be worried. I am soon be returning to India and I will take your news and all of that. Let me come back. I used to talk on telephone with him. Because I had told the captain that you see that uh, he talks to me. So there is no trouble for him. So he used to. And uh, you know uh, this Gokulashtami day? Yes. Krishna Janmashtami? Yes. He was in Suez. So he phoned me, captain phoned me. He said on board the... Uh, you, they had to cross the uh, Suez Canal, no? mm. so they were there. So captain phoned me, okay, today is the Gokulashtami and on board the ship we are having a meeting and Swamiji will talk to us and then we will distribute sweets which we got and uh, everyone and uh, then we will have some bhajan records playing and all. I was associated with the, in the same uh, compartment in the ship, that uh, cabin, I mean cabin, that ship cabin. Because uh, that was a cargo ship, that was not a passenger ship. So apart from the captain's room, one uh, apartment was there and extra. And he was offered that room too go to himself. And after reaching Boston port, I got a letter from him. <coughs> and from that letter I was informed uh, he was attacked twice in heart attack. In the same seat in a journey of twenty three days to reach over to Boston. And immediately he asked me to send a medicine that Ayurvedic. Well, he mentioned the name of that medicine. I immediately I rushed to the shop and bought it. Immediately I sent it to him by air post. 
and he acknowledged that medicine and told me that at that time my mental balance was not so quite good because of his sickness and all other because he was quite aged at that time and it was obvious to become sorrow there or a father after all he is he was our father so immediately i sent this medicine to him in his address in usa and he acknowledged it and he was being recovered very fast very rapid and i we all of our families were pleased i talked with dr swami ji also on telephone so he said nay nay i am quite all right, right but i am very sea sick so i was i was talking to this captain and all that said ke tell uh, me little mother that i am going to die now he was very much sick so he was not feeling comfortable so he phoned me also i said are you are not going to die don't worry sea sickness doesn't kill anybody then he was not feeling very comfortable because the sea is not very good on that side little rough so then when he reached new york so, uh, that captain phoned me ke we have reached and i talked to swami he said yes he went to warden road akash ganga where the this hari krishna devotee was staying i went there and met to uh, swami madhu visa who was the in charge of the devotees i sat for few minutes then i was told by madhu visa then guru ji came just now from america and uh, sitting another room so you come with me and take the darshan of guru ji so i went to that room with madhu visa and uh, take the darshan of guru ji after sitting some time guru ji asked me where are you living I said I am living at Goregaon suburb of Bombay then guruji asked and uh, what are you doing that uh, I said my business is construction so guruji asked when you are getting up in early in the morning and what are you doing then I said when I getting up in the morning i am taking one cup of tea then going to toilet and uh, taking bath and do, then going on work then guru ji suddenly said then what is difference between pig and you you are just like a pig then i said yes maharaj please advise me that talk and change my life then guruji said you must uh, do to service of krishna then i said i have not associated any spiritual movement or the saint or the devotees so guruji said from tomorrow my devotees will come to your house early in the morning and then you do the nagar sankirtan there with my devotees and then all the devotees will take feast lunch at your home and uh, you will be involved in is this way in the spiritual Uh, One day, while giving Prabhupada his prasadam, I asked him, Prabhupada, what is your favorite preparation? Prabhupada replied, saying that he likes all the preparations. 
I inquired again. No, Prabhupada, what is your most favorite preparation? Then Prabhupada said that his favorite preparation is shukta. So I used to cook four or five types of shukta for Prabhupada every day. Whenever I would take Prabhupada his prasadam, he would say, You have cooked so much prasadam for me, but first give me the shukta. So I would always give Prabhupada his shukta first. When we purchase this land, uh, Hare Krishna land, there was living so many mm. characterless peoples who were trying the, doing the liquor business and uh, they were, there were also after some time quarrel between Mr. Nair. This land was ca called uh, Nairwadi. No, it is Hare Krishna land. So, uh, one day Guruji was here. We were sitting in uh, this, you know, on 8th road. Uh, Valia's house. Eh? Valia's. Valia's house. Uh, Guruji was there, myself, Valia and my wife was there in that room. So Valia said to Guruji that Guruji, Mr. Nair will not give you this land because he had uh, offered by some uh, hoteler, hotel owner uh, for 36 lakhs and you have, uh, you are purchasing for 40 lakhs. And Mr. Nair has to pay so much income tax, so he must be change his idea and he will give the land to that person who is offered for 36 lakhs. Then Guruji said, there is no matter if he don't want to give this land to us, that he must return our money. But I don't think that he will, he can pay the income tax in this life. So Guruji went uh, uh, at the night uh, to Sydney. And when we awake up in the morning, we heard that Mr. Nair's heart failed and he died. So, you can image that how Guruji said that uh, I can't think that Mr. Nair will pay him tax burden in this life. <laughs> so Mr. Nair finished. Takhon prasad ranna korte korte onek din por. I was cooking prasadam for Prabhupada every day. One day, somehow, the prasad was late, so Palika cooked something quickly and took it to Prabhupada. Prabhupada asked, where is the prasad that Kishori cooked? And he immediately asked the devotee to phone the big kitchen and find out why the prasad was late. So I hurried and quickly took the prasad to Prabhupada's house. And when I got to the house, Prabhupada was standing in front of the stairs. I immediately put my head down and took the prasad inside. Just as I was leaving the house, Prabhupada asked me, Why are you crying? I said, Prabhupada, because I have delayed your prasad today. Prabhupada said, I am not upset about that. What I am worried about is that if you delay my prasad, then you might one day delay Radhamadav's prasad. And if you delay Radhamadav's prasad, then he might become upset. That is why I have asked why my prasad was late. He is always speaking truth, you see, and always quoting from Bhagavatam, uh, Srimad, uh, Bhagavad Gita, and from Chaitanya Chaitanya, always quoting some slokas from uh, those places. And, but he was so simple to answer those questions to us that he, it, anybody, even an atheist, uh, will feel that I should be uh, in touch always with Prabhupada. He had a showy, a smile face. I am seeing his, the celestial flower of the paradise. 
the how affectionate man he is. I can't remember, I can't express the actual, the, the meaning of just such a smiling. I have never seen such a smiling. Prabhupada used to go for a japa walk every morning with his disciples after Mangalarti. Some days he would walk to the moth, some days he would walk along the Ganges, some days he would walk around the Pukur, some days he would come to the kitchen. After the japa walk, Prabhupada would come to Guru Puja, and as devotees would offer flowers to him, he would give them prasadam. Once, uh, he said to me, Dr. Kapoor, forgive me for my offenses. I don't know what he really meant. I said, what do you mean? What offenses? That was his greatness, I think, his humility, his humility. You have done so much for Mahaprabhu, you see. What offenses? I can't understand what you mean. Humility, what else? After Prabhupada would take darshan of Radha Madha, he would go around the deities three times. Each time he would stop and ring the bell, and then he would raise his arms and dance. All the devotees would dance with him in ecstasy. When children would pass in front of him, he would stop again and dance. In this way, he would go around the deities three times. I can only speak what I know from reading Prabhupada's books, because I never saw Prabhupada personally. I may not be able to do what Prabhupada did, but I know that in order to get free from this material existence, I should follow in his footsteps and follow the path he has shown. In the future, I will try to dedicate my mind and life to Krishna, and of course, Prabhupada too. He advised me in 1977, uh, the three, four months before his disappearance, please uh, take care of your mother and your family, because I left home, and you were two brothers, and your elder brother has become very inactive, so you must be well careful to take the responsibilities and all other things that may require for benefiting of your family and all other members. You are telling me, sir, I'm going to build a um, in Vrindavan, Asham, so I'm going to build a special place for you to stay. I know that. When you go, I'll come. But last he went from there. I know, he sent me one. Yes. I'm going to Vrindavan now. And I don't think I'll come. He knew that he's going to go. I told him also, we'll get doctor. He said, no, no, good. Very nice man. As a man also, he was very nice. Very kind, very soft, very nice. The man has done so much. And what did he take? Nothing. And he has left behind such a big landmark. Not only religion, religion, culture, everything. All over the world. So uh, we must try to see that whatever he has done is we can't increase, all right, but we must keep it. It must remain alive. That is what I feel. We are deeply charmed and rather we are very much proud of our father that is your spiritual master. And of course, he was also our spiritual guide. We are very much charmed and pleased that no ordinary people can do it. It is absolutely impossible for them, rather, to make a good mission and a big mission and wide range of propagation and all other, because it is very 
we much feel rather very proud of our father and this is our ultimate conclusion about that.